I'm Daria Shidibayan Tuyakaeva. The topic of my lecture is the impact of the gender policy on the functioning of the English language. We are going to tackle with the two questions in the lecture. The first one, status quo of the gender category of the modern English noun. The second problem is the impact of the gender policy on functioning of the English language. In a new and rapidly changing world, policy became a new force on the global scene, became an international public opinion, informed and supported by worldwide media, and became extraordinarily potent in getting things done and done quickly. At the very outset, we need to point out that the role of correct language is of great importance in negotiations and in bargaining for advantage. Using meaningful structure, structures in meaningful situations is very important in negotiations for peace. How do politicians carry a reasoned debate about complex issues? Do they use simple words and uh, uh, structures to express their opinions? to express complex ideas, or do they use complex structures to express simple ideas in order to screen their true intentions, are of paramount interest today. We are witnessing the upsurge of interest on the impact of the gender policy on the functioning of the English language. For example, a teacher is drastically underpaid all over the world, though his work is very difficult. Do you students, do you think it is politically correct or it is not discriminating when all over the world the number of female teachers are, is much greater than the number of male teachers? Nevertheless, we use referential pronoun he uh, to compensate the referent word teacher. Of course, don't you think it, it is uh, discriminating? Of course it is discriminating. Discriminating English is called bias English. Bias means, uh, the meaning of the word bias is stereotyped. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, recently, United Nations Organization, UNESCO, have launched a resolution forbidding using gender biased English, that is, discriminating English. So, we should avoid gender biased English. For example, lawyer, student, uh, linguist, they are substituted with the pronoun he. What does it mean? It means keeping women in the shadow. Our task is, there are several ways of avoiding biased English. We are against biased English. We are against uh, gender exclusive English language. Reasons are the following. First, biased English marginalizes women or men, and they create the impression uh, that females or males are dominant, so to say, members of the society. Uh, it makes women or men invisible in language. The third, it is demeaning women uh, in the society. Uh, when uh, wording appears in that way. We treat men, we treat men as the occupational servants to women, and we treat uh, uh, women as if they are uh, properties of men by marriage. So the thing is, uh, we should dwell on the ways of um, avoiding 
gender bias English. There are the following ways of avoiding gender bias English. The first way is using such pronouns as parallel pronouns as he, she. And now let's remake or reconstruct the above mentioned example, above mentioned sentence. A teacher he, he, all over the world is drastically underpaid, though his work is very difficult. It is a biased English. It is discriminating, uh, though the number of, as I have told, the number of women is much greater than the, than the number of males. Uh, we use pronoun, referential pronoun he, so instead we should use pronouns parallel pronouns he and she or she and he. This is the first way of avoiding biased sentences, biased structures, English structures. The second way is using uh, they in the singular. For example, an average student is worried about his grades. An average student is worried about his grades. Instead, here, students, we are uh, students, for example, the word student uh, includes male students and the female students. And when we use uh, uh, pronoun his in order to substitute uh, as referential to the word student, it means we remove female students from the group from the society. So, it should be using uh, they in the singular. Uh, the structure would sound in the following way. That is, uh, exclusionary forms, uh, form is, the average student is worried about his grades. Inclusionary, that is, fair, gender fair or gender free variant is, the average student the average student is worried about their grades, about their grades. Besides, instead, referential pronoun, uh, uh, besides the referential pronouns, we can use Spivak pronouns. Uh, Michael Spivak, an American linguist, in his uh, uh, work, Joy of Text, suggests a number of pronouns uh, 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 which are suitable to be used in order to avoid uh, uh, exclusionary forms. Spivak pronouns, but not all the grammarians support Spivak pronouns. Some grammarians are against Spivak, uh, Spivak pronouns because though Spivak pronouns are very easy in writing, but when it is very queer or it is very difficult in pronunciation. And some grammarians are against this uh, pronoun, saying that when a person uses spivak pronouns, he or she sounds as if he or she has an accent. This is, these are the grounds why uh, some of the uh, grammarians do not support Spivak pronouns. So, and the second, there are job titles, especially sensitive job titles sensitive to gender bias English. So, uh, we should use, there are a lot of, in the word stock of the English language, there are a lot of counterparts or uh, variants, equivalents, and that's why uh, we hope that it's not very difficult to use uh, uh, adequate gender-free or inclusive uh, variants. In the first place, a very difficult thing is pseudo-generic man. In fact, in fact, we should avoid, erase the word man uh, from our language in order to be gender-fair and gender-free. For example, exclusionary forms, mankind. It is biased. Instead, we should use humanity, uh, human beings, people, or individuals. Man's achievements, human achievements. 
the best man for the job, the best person for the job. The first, dear friends, the first ones are exclusionary forms and the second, they are count inclusionary counterparts. That's why you should be very attentive in listening to this very information. Man-made, um, uh, instead, it should be synthetic, manufactured and artificial. Instead, men hour, we should use labor hour, working hour, work hours or staff hours. The common man, this is a biased phrase, so to say, word combination. Instead, we should use the average person, ordinary person. Manpower, it is biased. We should erase this word from usage. And instead, we should use human resources, labor, personnel, staff, or workforce. Sportsmanship, fair play, team play, and so on. Especially very interesting to follow uh, the fate of verbs uh, which contain the word man. For example, ex exclusionary forms to mend the pumps. Instead, we should use inclusionary just alternatives or counterparts. We should use to work the pumps. To mend the desk, to stuff the desk to mend the phones, to answer the phones, to mend the um, stock room, to stuff the stock room. And so identifying men and the women in the same way, that is, uh, they should appear in uh, certain places, is discriminating. That is why uh, we, for exa examples, are the following: <clears throat> policemen. Instead, we should use uh, police officer. Firemen. We should use firefighter. Fishman. Hunter, and so on. The following just examples. Uh, uh, you should seek alternatives to language that discrimination, trivializing women. For example, I have my girl to do that work. It is gender biased. It is not uh, polite. Instead, one should say, I'll ask my assistant. That is, my girl, it is Ruth. And instead, secretary. Yes, my secretary, my assistant, and so. Uh, for in the example, Mariah is a career woman. It is also not politically correct. It is also biased, so to say, or discriminating. Instead, we should use Mariah is a professional. You guys, go ahead. Instead, students, students, all of you, please go ahead, and so on. Uh, this is a man's side job. This is a complex job. Conclusion. Do not present females and the males as possessing stereotyped, gendered, attributes. For example, uh, you should not always imply that girls are timid and the boys are brave. Males are admired for their accomplishments and the women for their physical attributes. Females are passive, males are active. In conclusion, I'd like to state the following just facts. Uh, so, uh, the impact uh, of uh, gender policy on functioning of the present day English is of great interest. Uh, it is concerned for this, the impact of gender policy on the functioning of the 
uh, English language is, so to say, is conditioned by the feminist uh, movements or by the feminist language planning. Uh, uh, we also hope that the discussion presented in this very lecture will be a topic of for further research and a valuable asset in establishing equal opportunities for every individual of human race. As I have told at the beginning of the lecture, the problem can be treated in two uh, just angles. The first, the status quo of the gender problem in modern English. As far as this problem is concerned, the information you can find in this very collection, Education in One World, and my article is on page 577.